Okay, now I want to apply some of those golden formulas to some clinical situations, some real world situations where these formulas might be used. Um, so if you haven't watched video one, you may want to go back and watch that. There's a link below. Um, but these uh, seven gold, golden formulas will guide us in a lot of clinical considerations. Now one caveat here is I've heard that the registry no longer uses this format here for testing, which I think would be really unfortunate because um, these, I love these types of problems. They're like the Sudoku of x-ray technology problems. So they're actually pretty fun to work once you figured out the, uh, the way the, to apply the seven golden formulas uh, to these problems. So the, the, this first problem, all, pretty much the format here is always going to start with an old technique, a new technique, and the assumption is that we want to somehow maintain exposure at the image receptor um, even as the technique changes for whatever reason. And sometimes the technique changes are, are a little strange, but um, we can think about reasons that we might need to justify each one of them. So the first one, we just go through the list. The old technique was uh, 80 kVp. Um, the new technique, so the kVp has changed. Uh, 450 MA, 500 MA, so something changed with the MA as well. Um, looks like what we're solving for is seconds here, um, and then nothing happened with the grid. So the first thing we want to do is just solve for the, the mass, figure out what the mass is. So 450, we're applying the first golden formula times a 0 0.05. Um, so this is a, a mass of 22.5, right? And I, I, I suspect I know what's going on here. I think that this has been an application of the 15% rule. 15% is what I'm suspecting. So it's always good to ask ourselves, what do we expect is happening here? So I'm going to say 80 times 0.15. This is the way I figure out uh, what 15% of 80 is. And if I add 12 to 80, I get 92. So this is an application of the 15% rule. The KVP has increased by 15%. So if I want to maintain exposure, I need to decrease the mass. I need to cut the mass in half. Now, that's uh, pretty easy to solve for here. Um, so I would just take a 22.5, um, divide it by 2. So um, what, I, what I want over here is 11.25. Um, but uh, that's probably not what I've been given. Uh, yeah, they, they gave me just the time. So uh, in order to do this, I'm going to need to uh, just uh, solve now. I'm going to have to use my little mass uh, formulas to figure out uh, what exactly is the time that this is. So um, knowing that this is a uh, mass on top, so I'll put 11.25 on top of what? The MA 500. So this is going to be a very small number divided by 500. And this is the time in seconds, uh, 0 0.02 seconds. Right? So that's how to maintain exposure with this 15% increase in KVP. Okay, the next problem, journeying on. Uh, 63 KVP, that hasn't changed. Something's going on with the MA. Looks like the time has changed as well. Oh, and they changed the grid. They went from not using a grid to a grid. So the big significant thing here is the application of, of a Bucky factor. So I'll, again, I'll solve for the mass here, uh, which is 350 times 0 0.015. And you'll find there's some shortcuts, but I'll go ahead and show each step for right now. So that's the, the current mass is that. Um, and the way that we're going to set up for this grid factor is we want the, uh, the new over the old. So the new grid factor is a grid factor of 4. The old grid factor was a grid factor of 1. So we'll put 4 over 1. And this is going to be times 5.25. So you can see using a grid significantly, in this case, four times the amount of mass is going to be required. So we'll just say uh, 4 times uh, 5, so 21. That's the mass, but what we're needing to solve for is the actual MA that will give us this mass. So again, we'll put 21 over the time in seconds, 0 0.3, or 0 0.03 I should say, divided by 0 0.03, 700 MA. And so uh, whether or not this is a real technique, I don't know. We might have to actually change, increase the, uh, the, the time in seconds in order to maintain this mass here. Um, but these are the types of technical considerations we have to um, consider when we're working with different types of equipment. OK, moving on. This next problem says, uh, so zero, uh, a 105 kVp, so nothing changed there. Something going on with the MA, uh, something going on with the time here. Oh, and now look what they've done with the grid. They've gone down. They were using an 8 by 1 grid, and they're saying, uh, you know what, let's decrease the patient dose some. Let's use a 5 by 1 grid. So uh, basically the same setup, just now in reverse. So again, we'll, we'll solve for the, uh, the mass here, 
400 and you can see where we are constantly using this simple calculation of solving for mass just every moment of every day um, and oftentimes the machine does this type of thing for us but we should have it in the back of our mind eventually we're going to need to solve for that uh, mass as well um, but the way we'll so set this up in terms of the grid factor is we have the um, again the new grid factor grid factor of 2 and the old grid factor grid factor of 4 so new over the old we could simplify this down to 1 half so we really just need 1 half the mass that's an easy solve 6 6 should be the mass here if we if we reduce the grid ratio here and so now we need to just again solve for um, that MA uh, 0.015 so 6 divided by 0 0.015, 400 MA. All right, moving on. So we've got the old technique, 95, 95, nothing's really changed. There's something up. This is a density maintenance problem because we can see a change in the distance here. And, and frequently we would do this quite a bit when we're doing portable work. We need to change the distance and we need to uh, change our technique accordingly. So we'll set the old um, mass on top. And uh, the important thing here is to have the same distance on top squared and the same distance and, and the new distance on the bottom squared. And it's going to be helpful to just go ahead and memorize some, some numbers that uh, 40 squared is 16. Uh, 100 because we, we oftentimes use that SID and then uh, 72 just through years I know is 5184 right so that gives me a nice neat way of, of figuring out how I need to proceed I'll, I'll say 15 and the cross multiply here times 1600 right and divide that by what 5184 okay so the new mass should be 4 and it's always important again to ask is there 4.6 did it change in the way that I expected, right? So I had a significant reduce in SID. I would expect the mass to also decrease significantly. So it's always important to ask ourselves to proceed scientifically, what do we expect is going to happen when we make these changes? All right, the next few problems are looking at uh, geometrical considerations, things like magnification and stuff like that. So we got a four inch object x-rayed at a 72 inch SID, uh, five inch OID, how will it appear on the image? What will be the image size? So this is the magnification, and we remember that SID over SOD, and it should always be larger. So again, what do we expect is going to happen? We expect that the image size will be larger than the object size. So let's go ahead and set this up. Uh, but they, they did something kind of mean to us, right? They didn't actually give us the, uh, the SID. So we're gonna, before we can even get started, we're gonna have to subtract uh, uh, 5 from 72 in order to find out what the SID is. Right. So uh, 72 minus 5, 67. Right. 67 is our actual SOD. So we said SID over SOD, 72 over 67. And so far it's looking good because I would always expect this number to be slightly larger than 1 because it should be magnifying the thing, not a lot, but enough. So 72 divided by 67, it will give us a number slightly larger than 1. In this case, 1.07 is the way I'll write that. And this is a dimensionless magnification factor, so it doesn't have any uh, dimension attached to it. I'm going to multiply this, again, by the object size in inches, and it's going to give me how the image size will appear times 4. So a little bit bigger, 4. Point, uh, I'll round this to 3, 4.3 inches um, is how the image size will appear due to magnification. Okay, this next problem is asking, an object measures five centimeters on the image, what is the actual size if the SID is four inches and the OID is, is uh, 15 inches? And now you might be thinking, oh my goodness, now I gotta convert inches to centimeters and this is just gonna be miserable. No, you don't have to do that because again, the magnification factor is a dimensionless factor. So the good news is, is once you have that factor, it doesn't matter if you're using centimeters or inches or feet or whatever. Um, it will, it will, the factor will work just the same. So again, oh, but they were mean. They gave us the uh, the SID and the OID, so they're trying to trip us up. So we'll say 40 inch, right, minus an OID of 15. This will give us the SOD. So 40 minus 15. 25 should be the sod. 
and we'll set this up with a SID over SOD 40 over 25, right? So 40, and again, we would expect it to be a number slightly larger than 1. 1 1.6 is that magnification factor, right? And how we're going to figure out what the, um, in this case, what the object, what the image size is. Um, oh, but they were tricky again. An object measures 5 centimeters on the image. So this is really asking us what is the image, the image size, um, what is the object size. And so again, we would expect the object size to be smaller. So how are we going to figure that out? Well, we'll take the 5 centimeter right, image size and we're going to divide it by 1.6. So 5 divided by 1.6, so we should get something smaller, and we did, 3.125, so the actual centimeters. So the actual object is 3.125 centimeters. So again, watch the wording. The registry probably won't ask, try to be tricky about the wording, but it is something to be aware of uh, as we get into the weeds of these types of geometrical problems. All right, the final one is asking us about unsharpness, a.k.a. penumbra. And so it's given us the focal spot size, which they pretty much have to give us. There's really, uh, it would be very difficult to solve for that. Um, SID and an OID. So they didn't give us the SOD, which we need, because our, our, our formula here is focal spot size times OID divided by the SOD, right? And this is going to give us the amount of penumbra. So I'll go ahead and just set this up. 1.5 is our focal spot size. Our, our OID is 8. And... Uh, SID of 100 minus 8, 92 is the SOD, right? So we got 4 over 92, right? And we can plug that in because I can't do that math in my head, but we know it's going to be a very small number, right? 0 0.043, and I'll leave it right there. And this is expressed in millimeters, right? So um, this very, very, very small number here. Um, is the amount of blur at the edges of the image. Well, hopefully this was helpful. Please um, like and subscribe. Um, I'm going to try to post the PDF for this worksheet, um, but if you, if, you, if you have any struggles finding it, you can just email me and I can send it to you. And thank you so much.